What's up team, Nick here. Now as many of you already know, I just got back from Italy where I had the opportunity to travel as part of the USSA karate team to compete at the WUKO World Cup Martial Arts Tournament. It was an awesome competition held just east of Venice, Italy, and it had about 1,700 competitors, so it was a good sized competition. A lot of awesome athletes from all over the world. Now from the USA, we brought just a small team of nine competitors with four coming from Florida and five of us coming from Michigan. And I tell you what, we had an awesome time and had some awesome results. So in the next couple minutes, I just wanna share with you some of my experiences, show maybe a couple clips of the competition and just let everybody know because I had a lot of people reaching out to me and asking what the results were. So I wanna take this time and just give you an update as to what happened over there and just some of the awesome opportunities we had before, during, and even after the competition. So like I mentioned, there were athletes from all over the world at this competition, from Italy, from Germany, from France, from Spain, um, even the Philippines and Australia. It was really cool to meet and connect with all these people, and that has to be one of my favorite things about international competition. It's not the fact that you find people of really high caliber. You can find those here in the States, but it's the fact that you get to connect with people and meet people from other countries and see that it doesn't really matter where you're from. It comes down to your training and the preparation that you did before the competition. And that's really what matters when you get out there. It's not what country you're from, what dojo you came from, how big your school is. It's what you bring onto the mats at that point in time. And that's really awesome for people that come from smaller dojos. I know that when I was growing up, quite often we would train in my instructor's garage or in a school gym, you know, just anywhere we could find that we could train, but we had heart. So if you come from a small dojo or a big dojo, it doesn't matter. It matters what effort you put in. All right, so as far as the competition goes, like I said, we brought nine athletes including all the way down to the age of eight and all the way up to, well, a little bit older than eight. Um, so it doesn't matter how old you are or even the experience level because at some of these competitions you get the chance to have underbelt divisions instead of just black belts. And it gives an awesome opportunity for them as well. Now as far as our team goes, I'll just run through the results really fast and then if you want even more info or see some extra clips about the competition, check out the USSA Karate Facebook page or just connect with me on Facebook as well. I have those links down in the description box below. But we had two young underbelt athletes that came along. We had Monica and Brianna, who both did a phenomenal job, took gold in their fighting divisions, and Brianna actually took a silver in her kata division. Now in the adults, we had a couple underbelts as well. We had Maria from Florida, she was also a yellow belt, and took gold in her kumite division and a silver in her kata division. And then we had two purple belts right here from Kalamazoo, Devin Bird and Chris Proctor, who actually did a phenomenal job in their kata division and took first and second with Devin Bird taking first and Chris taking second by a really close margin. And then they bumped up into the adult black belt kumite division. Now in the adult black belt division, we had Kelly Duncheski, we had Louis Vera, Chris Wilkes, myself, and the two guys that I talked about bumping up into this division. Now as far as kata goes, we had some awesome competition. Kelly Duncheski, she was actually a brown belt, bumped up into the black belt division. And to make it even better, this was her first competition back after a really intense knee surgery. So she got out there, did a phenomenal job in her kata. She didn't walk away with a medal this time, but she walked away with an awesome experience and really the knowledge that she did a very, very awesome kata and competed against some of the best competitors in the world. All right, so when I got out there, I did kata. I didn't have my best day. I did have a little bit of an off day as far as kata goes. I walked away with a bronze medal, but more importantly than that, I walked away with the knowledge of things that I need to work on. But then we had Luis Vera get out there. He rocked it out. He actually took gold in his kata division. So a phenomenal job there. Now going over into black belt kumite, this is where we got to choose a little bit. We had our individual competition and team competition. So as far as team goes, we had myself, Devin Bird, 
Chris Wilkes and Chris Proctor. So Chris Wilkes and Chris Proctor both switched on and off because Chris Wilkes actually had to go and compete in his division. But that team, we actually took a bronze medal in that competition, so very good job to those guys that were on the team with me. Now in the individual competition, Chris Wilkes took a bronze medal in his veteran division, which was just full of really phenomenal, very experienced athletes. And then we got to compete in the Ippon division. So if you're not familiar with Shobu Ippon, it's a very traditional form of kumite where it doesn't necessarily matter that you just hit, it has to be a very clean technique and has to be able to set the person back. So even though you touch, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good technique or a good point. Now on top of those increased requirements for the competition, you also have a change of equipment. So in normal competition, we wear these gloves right here which supply a good amount of protection. In Shobo Ippon, you use these gloves right here, which are pretty much just socks. So they don't actually have a lot of protection. It makes it really important to have a good defense. If you were sparring with these, it might be okay if you get tagged with this because it's kind of like getting punched with a pillow. This, you're getting hit and you're gonna feel it. So as you can see, somebody left a mark on my glove here. Uh, because when you're going with these, you are going to be able to hit a little bit more, it's a little bit more intense, and you get to make some impact. So it's a lot of fun, but it is very intense. So in this division, we actually walked away with a gold and a silver. Chris Proctor took a silver medal, and I actually wound up taking a gold in this division. And this was really awesome to see because he was an underbelt who bumped up into the adult black belt division and took away a medal, which is phenomenal. And it's always awesome to meet your teammate in the finals in any competition. So just to show you really fast, these are the, the three medals that I brought home, including the, the gold in the Shobu Ippon men's black belt division, and then a bronze in Kata, and a bronze in team sparring. So I always tell people these really don't mean much at all. Medals um, shouldn't mean a lot to you. You can go online and buy medals. What you wanna really cherish are the experiences of the competition, the experiences of your teammates, and just what you learn from the competition. So um, I always like to tell people that the bronzes are even more important to me than the golds because these give me things to work on. This tells me that I did good enough. All right, so if you're always taking first, it's really hard to get motivated. Sometimes taking a bronze or not placing can really give you that added fuel that you need to bring yourself up to the next level. I'd like to thank everyone for sticking around and watching. I know I talked a lot during this, but I did wanna share all these experiences and give shout outs to all of the competitors and also give a shout out to Adrian Ellis for bringing us on the team, Tom and Sonia Kelly for coming along as referees and coaches, and then our entire support staff of friends, family, everybody that came along to do everything to help get the athletes ready and get them comfortable so they're able to compete at their highest level. But in the next few videos, I will be bringing you some of the drills, some of the techniques that we used to prepare and that we used during this competition. So if there's something specific you'd like to see or anything that I can personally do for you guys, please always toss it down in the comments. As you know, I love to connect with everybody down there. 
Thank you all so much. If you wanna see a bunch of videos and clips, make sure you connect with us over on Facebook. But until then, check out some of our other drills that we've done in the past and hit the like button and subscribe so you'll keep up to date with all of our upcoming videos. Thank you all so much. Have an awesome time training. See you all in the next video. Peace.